good. You're here. Ace is the name, and games is the game. I'm nobody's fool. I'll show you the rules. Cards and dice, nice. Games are skill to test your will. Show some nerve. Show some verve. If you're ready, I am. Want to play? Okay. Pick a game. <laughs> Any game. Give me five. Or should I say, give me pente. Five is what pente means. And pente is the name of the game. Give me a wink. Winks are the pieces pente's played with. Now, I'll let you in on something. You'll never find an easier game to learn than pente. Or a harder one to master. Here's how you play. Every player starts out with a wink. Place a wink by clicking on any intersection on the board. Now, your opponent does the same. Your turn again. Try to get five winks in a row, or capture ten of your opponent's winks two at a time. What could be simpler? <laughs> Almost anything. You'll see. Ready to play? And give me a wink and go.
four score and... Sorry, couldn't resist. Four score is what Connect Four is all about. This one's as simple as one, two, three, four. The object is to place four of your checkers in a row, vertically, diagonally, or horizontally, and do it before your opponent does. First player picks a checker by clicking on it. The checker is now your cursor. Pick the row you want to place your checker in and click the mouse to drop the piece into place. Then your opponent goes. Then you, until one of you gets a row of four checkers. In fact, you could say of the winner that four score and several checkers ago, <laughs> there I go again, sorry about that, couldn't resist, any more than you'll be able to resist just one more game of Connect Four.
Them bones, them bones. Well, these bones, actually. Dominoes, also known as bones. The colored dots are called pips. The object of the game is to get rid of all of your dominoes, to shed your bones, as it were. You place your dominoes in contact with other players' bones. Match the number of pips on yours with those of the bone on the board. Play starts when the bones are dealt. All leftover dominoes remain in the bone chest. A matched set of pips on one domino is called a doublet. The player with the highest doublet goes first. Click on the bone you want to place. The domino becomes your cursor. Rotate the domino by right-clicking the mouse. The domino moves clockwise until you've got the orientation you wish. Then just line up your bone with the domino you're playing against and click. If you can't play a domino, you have to draw another from the bone chest by left-clicking on the icon. If the chest is empty, the lid will be closed and clicking on the chest will pass. Play proceeds turn by turn until one player's hand is emptied or until no more dominoes can be played. There are two ways to calculate the score and the winner. If all of a player's dominoes are put into play, that player wins. The remaining players tally the number of pips on their remaining dominoes and that's the score the winner receives. If, however, no more dominoes can be played, the player with the fewest bones remaining wins. The total of all the other players' pips becomes the winner's score. Now you're ready to play dominoes. I can feel it in my bones.
Step right up, step right up. Keep your eye on the spinning colors. Make you feel a little queasy? Don't sweat it, pal. Got a game here that's breezy. Played with dice, pawns, and a board. Moves fast, smooth, and easy. And goes by the name of Pachisi. Got its start in old India, but it's found a big following all over the world. Best for four players, Pachisi gives each player four pawns, with each player playing one of four colors. To start a turn, each player rolls two dice. For each five rolled, or a sum that equals five, such as one plus four, the player must move one pawn out of the starting area and into a safe place that matches the player's color. After the pawn has entered the safe space, it can begin its trek around the board. Pawns move counterclockwise only. For each turn after safe entry, the pawn can be moved according to the numbers rolled on the dice. A 4 and a 3, say, could be used to move one pawn four spaces and another three spaces, or to move a single pawn seven spaces. Fives, though, can only be used to move pawns out of the start area until all pawns are on the board. The object of the game is to get all your pawns home, that square in the middle of the board. But there's a few challenges along the way. Pawns can be captured by opposing players. To do that, one of your dice, or the sum of both of them, must bring your pawn into the same square as an opponent's pawn. That pawn is captured and must start the journey over again, waiting for a five in order to enter the board again. Now. If one of your dice gives you enough movement points, you can choose simply to pass over the enemy pawn. What you can't do is choose to pass a turn. You roll it, you gotta move it. Two pawns of the same color on the same space form a blockade. Nothing gets past the blockade, not even another pawn of the same color. If you blockade a player's start space, that player's pawns can't enter the game. No more than two pawns can ever occupy the same space. You get some special moves if you roll doubles. If you roll doubles while you've still got pawns in the start area, play the amounts on the dice and roll again. Roll doubles again, and you get another roll. But if you roll doubles a third time, you get no more moves, and your most advanced pawn has to go back to the starting space. Roll doubles when all four of your pawns are out, and you not only get what you rolled, you get to use both sides of the dice. Roll them again and come up doubles, same goes. Doubles a third time with all pawns out, though, and you get no more moves and your most advanced pawn starts over. There's some bonuses here, too. Capture another player's pawn and you get 20 spaces per pawn captured. Get home and you get 10 bonus moves. Bonus moves have to be taken whole. Can't move just part of it. If you can't take the whole bonus move, you don't get the bonus. Bonus moves are always made after all other moves and rolls, including doubles, are taken. Neat game. And despite its name, as you can see, ain't nothing cheesy about part cheesy.
Ha, <laughs> Thank you. 
Check a cab. Fact checker. Spell checker. Check a career. Oh, that's me. Won't go there. Ah, check a board. But bored you won't be. Not with one of the simplest, most popular games of all time. Know what I'm talking about? Checkers. Big surprise, huh? I've been playing this one since your granddaddy was in diapers. So why not let me show you a few of the angles the game offers? Angles, my friends, are what checkers is all about. The game is played on a checkerboard. Another big surprise, huh? And you play by moving one piece at a time. Click on the checker with your mouse to pick it up and move it one space at a time along the diagonals of the board. The only time you can move more than one space is when you encounter an opponent's checker on a square adjacent to yours. Then you jump that piece and it's removed from the board. Set up a string of jumps if you can. The more of your opponent's pieces that you capture, the closer you are to winning. Until you reach the opposite end of the board, you can only move forward. But when you do reach the other side, your piece becomes a king. Kings get to move in both directions. 
you win the game either by removing all of your opponent's pieces or by forcing your opponent into a position that offers no moves. Got it? Thought so. Sit yourself down then and let's play some checkers.
my time, and that's a long time, let me tell you, I played games with all kinds of people. Rich and poor, noble and not, pawns and kings, you might say. In fact, I just said it. Well, let me say it again so you get my drift. Pawns and kings. We're talking chess here. We're talking chess. Maybe the best-known game in all the world. It's the ultimate strategy game, one you can never use up, never stop learning, never stop playing. Easy to learn, Hard to master. And that's true whether you're a pawn or a king. Chess is a two-player game. One player is black, the other white. Your pieces match your color, but move on squares of either color. There are six types of pieces. Pawns, these are your foot soldiers, moving one square at a time, except on their first move when they can go two. Rooks, think of these as heavy artillery, able to move as far as they can in a straight line that's either horizontal or vertical. Knights, your mounted troops, they move in an L shape, giving you some flexibility. Bishops, these guys work the angles, moving diagonally as far as you want them to, or as far as they can. Queen, the most mobile piece on the board, moves in straight or diagonal lines. King, he's the, well, the king, only moves one square at a time, but he's the key to the whole shebang. Lose your king, and the game's over. The object of the game should be pretty clear. Protect your king while going after your opponents. When your opponent has your king in a position to be taken, it's called check. Get your king, or the other guys, into a check that he can't get out of, and it's called checkmate. Rooks, kings, and queens can capture opposing pieces with a direct, straight-line attack, like this. Pawns, bishops, and also kings and queens can capture opponents diagonally like this. Your knights take the enemy like this. Is that cool or what? Some special rules to be aware of. Your rook has a nifty talent called castling. When there's no pieces between your rook and your king,
and neither the king or the rook has been moved during the game, your king can move two spaces toward the rook while the rook moves to the opposite side of the king. You can castle either toward the king's rook or the queen's, but not if the maneuver moves your king through check or if the king's final position is in check. Then there's queening. This is your pawn's big moment. Get a pawn all the way across the board and the pawn becomes a queen or a knight or a bishop or a rook, no matter how many of these you already got. Finally, in passing, let's look at en passant, which is French for in passing. Like I showed you, your pawn's opening move can be two spaces. After that, the pawn moves only a single space. Say your pawn has made two moves, the two for on opening, and then a single space, and your opponent moves a pawn out two on opening, so that it's directly beside your guy. In that case, your pawn can make an en passant attack, like this. Won't happen often, and you can only do it immediately after the other guy moves. But I wanted you to be ready should the situation arise. And that's it. Simple, huh? <laughs> sure. That's why tens of thousands of books have been written about chess strategy. That's why your computer's cousins, distant cousins, get so much attention when they beat one of us humans. Simple. <laughs> and endlessly challenging. That's chess. Go ahead, pal. Make your move.
This one old. Backgammon is a two-player game that goes back to the 18th century. That's the 1700s for the rest of us. Back then it was a high society game. Very hoity-toity for swells and snobs. But it's too good a game for just them. Now it's played all over the world by everybody, including ordinary people like you and me. Well, like you. <laughs> the object of backgammon is to move your checkers off the board. What makes it a game is that you got to first move your pieces around the board. Each of us has 15 checkers to get all the way around. Start by rolling for who goes first. Each player rolls one die. High roller starts. In play, you roll both dice. You can use the sum of both dice to move one checker twice. Pay attention here. If you're moving one checker, the value of both dice, you make the moves separately, coming to a full stop if you legally can, between moves. If you can't make a legal stop with either figure, you're out of luck. Or play the dice separately, moving two checkers. If you roll doubles, you move the amount shown twice. Two threes, say, gets you four threes worth of moves. You must move if you can. But if you absolutely can't, you pass your turn. If you can only move an amount equal to one of your die, you got to go with the higher of the two if possible. You move from point to point through the course of the game. If you get more than one of your checkers on the same point, you've made that point. Your opponent can't land on a point that has two or more of your checkers on it, even for a pause between moves. Opponents can pass over a point with two or more enemy checkers, but only if the passover is accomplished using the moves on one die. One lonely checker on a point is called a blot. That checker can be hit or captured. Land the checker on an opponent's blot, and the opponent's checker is moved to the bar in the center of the board. Once a player has one, or a shudder to think, more than one checker in the bar, they become top priority, job one. you got to get them back on the board, and you can't do anything else until you do. Barred checkers can re-enter the board on any of points one through six. You do this by rolling the dice and picking one of them for the re-entry point, like so. You roll a three and a four, you can re-enter on the third or fourth point. Obviously, you ain't going to enter on a point your opponent's got made, but you can hit a blot on re-entry. Once you've entered with one die, you can move right away with the other and try to make up lost ground. If you got more than one checker on the bar, but can only re-enter with one die, you got to pass the rest of your turn. Once you've gotten around the board, you've got to get off it. This is called bearing off, and it's done by rolling a number that would take your checker one point off the board. No checker can be borne off until all of your checkers have gotten to the last six points. If one of your checkers gets hit while you're bearing off, you've got to re-enter that checker and work it all the way around to the last six points before you can bear off any other checkers. First player to bear off all the checkers wins. One variation you might enjoy is called stakes, played this way. Each game is worth one point. Players go through several games to reach an agreed-upon winning number. You can also play stakes with the help of the doubling cube. 
This is a special die that sits like this, in the center of the bar, starting with the number 64 shown. At any point during the stakes game, one player can offer to double the stakes, from 2 to 4, 4 to 8, all the way on up to 64. The opponent can accept or decline. If you decline, you forfeit the match in progress, and your opponent gets the game point. If you accept, the stakes are doubled, and you get the doubling cube at your end of the bar. After the first doubling, only the player who controls the cube can offer to double the stakes. The cube changes hands after each accepted doubling. And that's backgammon. This is one great game, let me tell you. You got a clue now as to why it's been so popular so long. So long? Yeah. Gotta go and let you get on with backgammon. Go ahead. Get the point?
Thank <laughs> you.